Welcome to Tent Talk, the podcast with Nancy McCready, where we talk about life under the big tent of God's presence and the provoking process of discipleship. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tent Talk. This is Nancy McCready. Who do you identify with? This is going to have bearing on every other aspect of your life with God, with yourself, and with others. And it does matter who you identify with. Take a listen, and I hope this encourages you to go deeper into your personal process of real, true discipleship with Him and potentially connect with me. Check out From Trauma to Trust, my book. You can purchase it on Amazon. Also, we would greatly appreciate that anyone that is a part of Tent Talk Podcast would give us a five-star review uh, rating. I'm sorry, give us a five-star rating. Give us a review that will encourage others to come on board with us. Help us to get the message out. We really appreciate you. Thanks so much. As I close out this short series, I identify as a son. I want to simply encourage you to realize how reciprocal the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit want the relationship to be with you and with me. Reciprocal means they have poured life into us. They have sought us out. They have done everything necessary for plan A to still be on, that They would have sons in the image of Jesus who would live in abiding oneness with them and mature in their way of life, their very nature, that they would then express that life, that every one of us would be able to say, if you've seen me, you've seen my father, and that we would truly exert um, their rulership over us personally out of deep oneness, and then we would be an extension of their authority in whatever manner they give us, whether it be over territories, to enter in the kingdom, to usher in the rule of God in men's hearts, not some militant, crushing rulership, my friends. That's what the world looks to do. God says, I'm going to come and rule in the hearts, minds, wills of my sons out of this deep love, and as they reciprocate back, and they love me out of that same love, and they choose me, and this inner life that we have together then will find expression in the way they live and move and govern and uh, open up other doors for people to, to know him Uh, And his kingdom rules in our hearts. And sure, I guess it would then begin to take over territory and nations, but not by a crushing rule, but by love. Real love, not mushy-gushy human love. Not your version of, you know, sweet, syrupy, sappy human love and mistaking it for God's kind of love. Um, So we see this reciprocal Um, relationship and fellowship, and it it speaks of it in James 4, verse 5 in the Amplified Classic. It says, don't you know that I've poured my spirit into you because I am jealous for you, and I want him to be welcome with a jealous love, that you would respond, and that you would be jealous for us out of our jealousy for you. Um, So in that... Uh, we realize that uh, they mean for this to become more and more and more out of our deep freedom. My friends, if the Father is satisfying you, feeding you the food of the Spirit that nourishes the soul and quickens the body, my friends, we will live as we were meant to live. And um, only they can produce that as we remain and stay in deep oneness with them. I love the way Tozer says it again in the chapter that I've been reading from. He, he says it's a powerful thing when life and lips join together. I love that. <laughs> Let the seeking man reach a place where life and lips join to say continuously, God, you be exalted. 
and then a thousand minor problems will be solved at once. His Christian life ceases to be the complicated thing it had been before and becomes the very essence of simplicity. Oh, wow. (laughs) Maybe you'll pick up the book and read these things yourself. It's an amazing thing. He talks about the reciprocal honor. As God has chosen man and set his affections upon him, man responds and does the same and honors God above all, above all, above personal ambition, above money, above family. Because you see, all these other things cannot take their proper order, and they do have a place, but they are not first. Self is not first. It is God. Oh, Father. Oh, Abba, Father. As maturing sons, not as, you know, little babies that just keep crying Papa as it's though it's some, you know, place to to remain. But there is the cry of Abba. There is the cry then from the baby, from the toddler, from the adolescent, from the, the young son into the maturing son, the weos of God. Oh, my friends, Jesus. Yeah, a child was born, but a son was given. Today, when you listen to this, I pray because it's being recorded. I'm in Austria. It's being recorded. It is Good Friday, the day that we look upon Jesus. And yes, he was crucified, but my friends, it was your crucifixion. You see, the enemy loves it if Jesus stays the one and we kind of just look upon Jesus and almost pity him and, oh, thank you for being our sacrifice. My friends, He was crucified so that every bit of our condition that separated us from the Father would be dealt its final death blow so that on, quote, Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, that he could be the firstborn of a whole new race, uh, that he would be the first of many brethren, that he in his loins would resurrect the sons that the Father has always wanted since before the foundations of the world. So I end this today saying, do you understand him crucified? Do you know him crucified? Because if you do, you understand that every single thing that separated you from the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit was dealt with in his death. And you talk about a mighty weapon of death on the death side of the cross that deals with everything that would keep you as a sinner, that would keep you in Adam, was dealt with every single thing. Hebrews 2 9 says that he tasted death for every single individual. Hebrews 2.14 says in his death he brought the devil to nothing. In uh, Romans 6, 1 through 6, it says the old man was nailed to the cross in him. We died, my friends. Jesus didn't just die for you. He died as you. He put you down the old man, not to rehabilitate, not to improve, not to flip from the evil to the good, the entire thing put down in his death. Every debt paid by his poured out blood. Colossians 2.14, every demon publicly humiliated and disarmed in Colossians 2.15, where did it all happen? On the cross. Every disease, Isaiah 53 says, and in Matthew 8, every single disease dealt with in the covenant cut in his back for healing. The law in Romans 7, sin in Romans 6, the curse in Galatians 3, the world in Galatians 6, and I'm certain (laughs) that I'm missing something, but it is the all-inclusive victory in his death that then walks us into resurrection life, the life side of the cross. It is their way of life. You see, my friends, we were crucified with him and in him that we then might live unto God as the new man, as sons, as a bride, as a temple. This is why Tozer goes on to say, 
in chapter 8. In our desire after God, let us keep always in mind that God also has desire, and his desire is toward the sons of men, and more particularly toward those sons of men who will make the once-for-all decision to exalt him over all. For why did he die? Second Corinthians 5 tells us that this one died and died for all so that men might no longer live unto themselves but unto him. Back to the quote from A.W. Tozer. Such as these sons are precious to God above all treasures of earth or sea. In them, in these sons, God finds a theater where he can display his exceeding kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. With them, with these sons, God can walk unhindered. Toward them, these sons, he can act like the God he is. Oh, my friends, God can move unhindered in these ones. God can be the God that he is. He doesn't have to walk on eggshells and, and, and keep us from having conversations because we stay in such shallow levels of immaturity. He can't say anything to us without us being offended and, and so confused that we leave and we deconstruct and we do this and we do that. My friends, he is working in his sons right now. You can celebrate Easter, but my friends, this is a life that we live in every single day. I identify as a son, and I thank God for how he has dealt with me as with a son, how he and his ways have dealt bountifully with me. I exalt him over all because he has made that possible. He made that possible. He made me a lover of him. I did not make myself that. He has made me a lover of him. And I pray that he will be able to move unhindered in me. And he can do it any way he wants. He can be the God that he is and express himself through such sons. Oh, could it be that this will be the church of the firstborn, as it says in Hebrews 12. He's about to move, my friends. And he's about to move through those who have finally said, He is all. He is everything. And not by just some emotional religious exclamation, but by a deep, deep working of the fullness of the work of the cross in Jesus and in the way of the cross. That's how the new man lives unto him. The same as Jesus. So, Here we go, my friends. I pray this has brought deep encouragement to you today and whatever day it is that you find yourself here at Tent Talk listening to this. Be encouraged. Identify as a son and watch how he pours into you and the two of you walk into this hour of history as one. And I promise you, it will lead to great production. Love you all. For more information on Nancy, please visit nancymccrady.com or follow her on social media at nbmccrady.